بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله All praise and thanks is due to Allah Azza wa Jal نحمده ونستعينه ونستهدي ونستغفره We praise him We beseech him We beg his guidance and his forgiveness ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا and we seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal from the evil of our own souls, our egos, and from the evil consequences of our actions. مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to guide, there are none who can misguide him. وَمَنْ يُضْلٍ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whomever Allah Azza wa Jal chooses to lead astray, no one can guide him. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And I testify that there is no God, there is no deity who is truly worthy of worship except Allah alone and without partners. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I further testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his slave and his final messenger. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهُ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe, O you who have attained faith, fear your Lord, the fear that he is deserving of you. And do not die except in a state of submission to his will. A'ani as Muslims. Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. O humanity, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, our father Adam. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And from our father Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created our mother Eve, Hawa. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً And from them both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala populated the earth with many men and women. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Fear your Lord through whom you ask your mutual rights. And always keep the ties of family. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever a raqib He is ever a watcher over you. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe, fear your Lord and always speak the truth, a straightforward word. Yuslihnakum a'amalakum. That he may repair your deeds. Wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. And forgive you your sins. Wa man yuta'in laha wa rasoolahu. فَقَدَ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, always together, whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has achieved the greatest success that you could ever achieve in this life. إِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best speech, the most truthful of speech, no doubt is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best of guidance, there is no better guidance than the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are when we try to introduce something new into this religion. وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And every time that is attempted, every time someone tries to bring something from their pocket and introduce it into Islam, it's a bid'ah. There is no such thing as bid'ah hasana. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مُحْدَثَةً وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ All of them, they are no good. وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And he said every religious innovation, every religious innovation is misguidance. وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And inevitably, every misguidance leads to where? Nowhere but the hellfire. أَيُّهَا الْإِخْوَةِ الْكِرَامِ أَيُّهَا الْأَحِبَّةِ I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to die upon Islam and to raise us upon Islam and Iman. On a day when we will have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the mahshar, on the great plain where we will all be gathered, every single one of us, that day that is fast and inevitably approaching, the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And it is coming to us faster for some than others. 
Because none of us know when we are going to die. But all of us are going to die. كما قال الله جل جل الجلال كل نفس ذائقة الموت Every soul shall taste death. But none of us know when that will happen. For some of us, it is when they are very young. Some of us, mashallah, tabarakallah, Allah has blessed many of you to live to an older age. But death is coming to all of us. Even to the most blessed of creation, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, even the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the close and dear intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even Allah said about him, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Even Allah told him he would die, and of course we all know that he has already passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But this is an inevitable journey that we will all have to take. But many of us, unfortunately, we live our life as if it is something completely different. As if this life isn't only 50 or 60 years. As if this life isn't going to end for all of us. As if the angel of death, wallahi, well, could possibly be visiting you every day. Because just like you don't know when you are going to die, Malik al Maut, the angel of death, he does not know when you are going to die. This knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And I will ask any of you now do you know there is a brother in our community? His name is Abdullah. Abdullah, he is in his 70s and he lives in Columbia Heights. If you don't know him now, don't worry, someday many of you and all of us we will get to know him. Do you know why? Because he is the one who is responsible in our community, the Muslim community, for washing the bodies. Old African American brother. If you don't know him, you will get to know him soon. Because now he has a phone group where he sends every day, every day it comes to my phone, another person who died. Every single day, without exception, someone has died. Even just recently, two weeks ago, he buried his own mother. But if you don't know him, don't worry, soon you will get to know him. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, with his first wife Khadija, most of his children at first he had to bury them. They were just babies. And when he did, Al Qasim, Abdullah, Zainab, Ruqayya, all of them they passed away. Then he had only one daughter left, Fatima, and one son. All of his other sons they died, except for now Ibrahim. Small baby, maybe about 16 months old. And this Ibrahim, his son, and we know how important to many of our cultures to have a son, how important it is to us. Continues your lineage, continues your name, continues your legacy. All of his sons, the Prophet ﷺ, they died. And now, at 16 months, his youngest one, after all of his sons have died, this is the next one he's dying also at 16 months. Just a small baby. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was crying. And Ibrahim, he's breathing his last breaths. And the Prophet ﷺ, he leaned over to him and he said, Ya Ibrahim. He said, my son Ibrahim, I don't have any power for you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot protect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His own son. Does his son understand what he's saying? 16 months old, he's a baby, he doesn't understand. Why was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that? Saying that to a 16 month old baby. Because ayyuha al-ikhwa wal akhawat, my dear respected brothers and sisters and elders, really in reality he was saying it for us. Because the companions, everything they heard from the Prophet Sallallahu they would take it, they would memorize it, understand it and try to implement it. And they would pass it on to the next generation. And so now this is for us that the Prophet Sallallahu he is saying. 
he was saying to his youngest son, Ya Ibrahim, la amliku laka min Allah shaykhan. Even to his favorite wife, most beloved wife, Aisha, to our mother, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, Ya Aisha, la amliku laki min Allah shay'a. Oh Aisha, I don't own anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot save you. I cannot help you when you are standing before Allah azza wa jal. La amliku laki min Allah shay'a. Even one of his dearest aunts, Safiya, what do you think he said to her? The same exact thing. Ya Safiyata, inni la amliku laki min Allah shay'a. Ya Safiya, I can't save you. I didn't die for your sake. I didn't come so you can be saved from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not some kind of power or repentance. I don't have that for you. That's only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I came to inform you. I came to teach you. I came to give you glad tidings and warnings. But me, I cannot save you. <coughs> Even didn't you see with his uncle, Abu Talib? The same thing. He was just saying, just say, La ilaha illallah. Just say, La ilaha illallah. So I have something to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not so I can save you, but so I can show Allah. At least he said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Even he couldn't save his own family. His own uncle, he couldn't save him. Because as we all know, Abu Talib, he died as a non-Muslim. He said, I die on the middle of the Quraysh, my fathers. He said, I will not betray them. What is the Prophet wasallam teaching us here? What is Islam teaching us here? It's teaching us that Islam is different from other religions. If you are a Christian, just like there is for those young kids, if you go across the street here, across from Imam Shah, Masjid Shafi, there is a place upstairs above that cigarette shop where they have Christians for your children. On Sat Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, they play video games, they have pool tables, they have everything. But you know what they tell them? They tell them, if you just accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be okay. You will be saved. You will be free. After that, if you have a ticket to Jannah in your pocket, do you have to do anything? If you have a ticket to Jannah in your pocket, you don't have to do anything. That's what they teach them there. And so at any rate, Islam is teaching us that it is different. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he did not come to save us. He came to show the people the way, the road. But they have to choose to take it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he came to show us the road, but you have to take it. Islam, that question that I asked, what is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching us when he's saying this? La amliku laka min Allahi shay'a. I don't have any power with Allah for you. And what is Islam teaching us when, is, when we hear this? That this religion is a religion of actions. That you have to do, ayyuhal ikhwa. You have to do, ayyuhal akhawat. You have to perform deeds. You have to do actions. This religion is a religion of action. And not specifically about quantity, but more about the quality of the actions. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah made us and He created us in this for this life. Not so that you can just go to work. Not just so that you can have children and get married and get a house and get your PCA care business or your cab business or your restaurant or your whatever. That is not the end, beginning and the end of this life. These are all just means to facilitate you doing what? The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That everything that you do is dedicated to whom? To 4.5? To my wife? To the people? No, to Allah Azza wa Jal. All my actions, my fasting, my coming to this masjid, my prayers, my being respectful to my neighbors, all of these things, for whom? Lillah Azza wa Jal. For Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah put us in this life to test us. He wants to see 
What are you going to do? He wants to see what am I going to do and how am I going to do it? And again, we said the importance here is what? Not of the quantity, but the quality. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he said, Rubba amalin sagheer yu'adhimuhu anniyya wa rubba amalin azeem yusagheeruhu anniyya. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he said, speaking about the quality of our actions, the quality of your salat, Allah al-Musta'an. Brothers, if you could please turn off your cell phones. He said, it very well could be that a small action, small action, small in quantity, small in size, it very well could be that the quality of it, your niyyah, that you didn't care about who was watching you when you were doing it, that you weren't paying attention to other people, the only thing on your mind was, is this going to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy? He said, this, يُعَظِّمُهُ it makes your deed, even how small it is. Wallah, if you gave $2 leaving this masjid, just $2. But your niya was, Wallahi, I only have $5. I don't have anything else. But I just want this that Allah will protect me on Yom Al Qiyamah. Just $2. And you are not thinking about anybody else. You are not thinking about who is watching me when I put the money in the box. They have to see me, make sure. Hey, everybody, I'm putting $2 in here, inshallah. $20 in here. If you just $2. If you have that intention that you are afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His punishment. If you want the Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jannah al-Firdaus. That's all you are thinking in your heart and in your mind. Yu'adhimuhu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, excuse me, Sufyan al-Thawri, he said it will make this deed tremendous in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, it could be the reason that saves you from hellfire. Two dollars. Siyam. Fasting. People don't know when you are fasting outside of Ramadan, Mondays, Thursdays. There are some people, they, they, they like to announce it for everybody. No, no, wallahi, I'm fasting Mondays and Thursdays. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. No, no. There are some people though, they hide their deeds so much so that nobody knows about it. That it's something special between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mondays and Thursdays, what is that? You are just not eating for a few hours. Sufyan al he said, what though? Yu'adhimuhu. Your intention, the reason behind why you are doing that. And ayyuha al-ikhwa, even though I'm mentioning these small little deeds, these are the small little deeds that will save you from the hellfire on Yom Al-Qiyamah. These are the small little deeds, these type of things that you need in order to keep you safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because for many of us, as I mentioned, that we will all have to die, that we will all have to face the angel of death, the reason why I started out by mentioning this ayyuh al wal akhawat is because many of us, we think that we will, own, we will be Muslim and we will say la ilaha illallah when we die, but our entire life before that is un-Islamic. What we do, how we carry ourselves, how we treat our wife, the way we do our business. Even there are some people, they have good, they are brain in the masjid, they have beard, they are what you call wadad, and then he has bad character. He thinks that has nothing to do with the religion. Or there are some people, they don't do anything of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have good character. And they think that's all of the religion. On both sides. Al-Muhim, the point is though that what? Some people, we live as if we can live an un-Islamic lifestyle. And then on when we are about to die, they think automatically you will say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. Even the first verses that I mentioned, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except as Muslims. How can you guarantee that you are going to die when, as a Muslim? If you don't know when you are going to die, how can you guarantee that you will die as a Muslim? I already mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam he guaranteed and told you, I can't save you. He told the people, forget you and me. He told the people who are closest to him, I can't save you. So then for us, if you want to die as a Muslim, that means you have to live your life as a Muslim. Now as a khatib, as a talib al ilm as a da'i, you don't know how many times people come to me and they say, Shaykh, please save my son. When he's 15, when he's 17, when he's 19 years old. 
I said, where were you when he was seven years old? Where were you when he was 10 years old? When he was 13? You bring him now to the masjid. Or now you want to bring him to the duksi. Now, when he's 19. Now, when his pants are sagging. Now, when he doesn't even identify himself as a Muslim. He doesn't care. His haircut, the way he dresses, etc. You don't even see anything that he's Muslim, except for maybe that he's colored. Maybe you can say, okay, he's Somali, so probably he's Muslim. But other than that, you can't tell that he's a Muslim. He doesn't care. Because the people, what? They live an un-Islamic lifestyle, and then when they have problems or things are about to go, then they want an Islamic solution. You don't know how many people, they come to me, they say, Wallahi, my wife, me and her, we are having big problems. I said, did you ever sit down with a sheikh to know about your rights, hukuq al-zawj, wa hukuq al-zawja, ever before you got married? No, Wallahi, sheikh, I didn't. <laughs> did you ever, after you got married, tayyib, khalas, okay, you got married. Did you ever sit down once with the sheikh and find out hukuq al-zawj? The rights of the husband and the rights of the wife. They say, La Wallah, Ya Shaykh. No, we didn't. Never. But I need you to fix our problem, Allah. Please fix our problems. We need an Islamic solution. They live an un Islamic lifestyle and then they want Islamic solution. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Ayyuhal Ikhu wal Akhawat? So if you are living an un Islamic lifestyle, whether it's in your household, whether it's how you do your business, Okay, if you are living like that, when the angel of death comes to you, how do you think he's going to find you then? If your lifestyle is un-Islamic, how will the angel of death, when he comes to you, what will you be like? Oh, you will say, hold on, wait, give me five minutes. Hey, Malik al hold on one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. La ilaha illa wa muhammadu rasulullah. Let me pray. Hold on. Two minutes. Is that what you're going to do when he comes? Because when the time comes, it's finished. So we have to have an Islamic lifestyle now. Then again, of course, if any of you, you know when you are going to die, mashallah. If you know when you're going to die, then okay, no problem. You can live how you want to. But if you don't know, if you don't know, then you need to be living an Islamic lifestyle now. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. First, I say for what I say for myself and then for all of you. And I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Him to forgive me. And I exhort all of you to do the same. Innahu huwa al rahim He is the all forgiving and the especially merciful. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da wa ba'd. Ayyuhal ikhwa wal akhawat. I mentioned to all of you about having an Islamic lifestyle. About living Islam. You being Somali does not guarantee that you have an Islamic lifestyle. Even myself, my family, they are from Ethiopia. That does not guarantee that I have an Islamic lifestyle. It doesn't automatically mean that. Because I'm Somali equals Islam. It doesn't work that way. Or because I'm Oromo or Adare or Haredi or Pakistani or Indian, it doesn't work that way. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Kayyisu mandana nafsa. The intelligent person is the one who reflects on himself. He looks at his habits. He looks at his character. He looks at how he conducts himself. And whatever is not good, whatever is not Islamic, he takes it out. Whatever is good, he keeps it there and tries to increase it. So one of the first things that we can, we can do to ensure, to ensure as much as we possibly can, don't worry, inshallah, it will be okay. Inshallah, to that we will be in a good condition when the angel of death comes to us. First and foremost is muraqibatun nafs. That we have to, daily, we have to check ourselves. When you go home, you have to think to yourself, how was I to my wife today? How was I with my family? How was my ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I pray in the masjid? Was I in the front row? If the answer is no, then how can I get better at that? What can I do to improve? But you have to do that every day. You cannot take a day off. Because again, I ask all of you again, do you know when the angel of death is coming? Man min kum ta'rifun. If you know, please tell me, because we don't. So you have to check yourself every day. 
It could be that you go to sleep at the night and you don't wake up in the morning. It could be now that we've woken up, it's Malish, it's 12.30. Could be that you don't get to go back to work. Could be that you don't go to the finish, the, go home today to finish dinner with your family. Muraqibatun nafs. This is number one, that you check yourself daily. And how is your, first and foremost, how is your ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is your relationship with Allah? Then of course, after that, the hukuk, yourself. Then after that, because the Prophet, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayu alladhina amanu, qu anfusakum, wa ahlikum nara. Then your family. Then those after, those after. Which brings me to my next point. If you want to know how is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is your relationship with the Qur'an? What is your relationship with the Qur'an? How many of, we, of us we read and we know it's the sunnah? We read Surah Al-Kaf. How many of us will stay in the masjid and read Surah Al-Kaf after the salah? How many of us we read as much as we can at least once, uh, excuse me, every day? How many of us we finish one juice every month? How many of us we take 10 minutes every day just to read the Quran? Not just for the barakah. No, 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 no. Bittadabbur. Wattafakkur. Kama qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Don't they think about the Quran? Don't you reflect on it? It's supposed to be. Your GPS to get you safely from this life to Jannah. It's supposed to show you. But you know, many of us, for some reason, we have that GPS. We all know. Alhamdulillah, we're Muslim. It's Jumu'ah. We have it, but we don't use it. We just put it on the side there. And we're driving around lost in the neighborhood. We're just driving around. You have it there. All you have to do is turn it on. All you have to do is look at it and follow the directions. How many of us we do that? So I'm saying, at least, at the very least, take 10 minutes a day, akhi. Take 10 minutes a day, just read the Qur'an. Not just, again, I said, not for the barakah. Of course there's barakah in it, but not exclusively for the barakah. For the guidance, for the hidayah. For the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, min alip min surat al-Fatiha ila surat al-Nas, kalam man, is the speech of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you read the Quran, who are you talking to? Who is, excuse me, who is speaking to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking. Tayyip. So if how is your relationship with the Quran? You will know how is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, I will finish with this one. Because it is something that is very important because now it's starting to warm up. As you can all see me, mashallah. On outside, everybody knows what's coming. The way that the people dress is about to change. I strongly, highly encourage all of you, whether you are older, mashallah, tabarakallah, but you are still shab, mashallah, and those of us who are younger, is to fast. Wallahi hadha awnun kabir jiddin, and we need it desperately. The way the people will start to dress now, when it starts to warm up, but this will help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yajri is shaytan. He's running in our veins. And he said in another hadith, when you are fasting, it restricts your veins. It closes them. That means it's closing the pathways for the shaitan. And it decreases your sexual desire. And how badly will we need that now this summer when it's coming now? You all know what's coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to lower our gaze. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Make our love, our wives and our children the coolness of our eyes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the last day. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering and the difficulties of the Muslims all over the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them aid and to strengthen them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and to guide their leaders. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the leadership of the Muslims here and to guide the masajid and to bring them upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the understanding of the salaf. Wa akhna da'wana wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa aqimu salah.